That's what an Akuto saw. Yeah. Are you doing that? Yeah. Yeah, look at Allegria, she's moving too. Are you, are you, are you knocking the seat off? Yeah. Oh, handsome guys. <laughs> this slush greenery was a tropical rainforest of the old Zambales mountain range, situated in the central northwest of Rizal Island. Automatic, they turn it on. The vast, magnificent landscape stretches from the mountains of western Pangasinan province to the whole length of Zambales province up to the tip of Pata Island. Like we're, dri we're riding and crossing driving. Manila Bay. It also traverses some of the municipalities of the Twice. provinces of Tarlac. Why is the seat and moving? It doesn't make any sense. It's just like you're riding on it. Its most prominent section in Zambales is known as the Capusilan Mountain Range, composed of Mount Negron, Mount Cuadrado, and the legendary Mount Pinatubo. The indigenous Aitas, believed to be the first people to live in these areas, reveal Mount Pinatubo as their holy land, where the Almighty God Apo Namayad resides, and all the lands lie adjacent to the mountain as their ancestral domain. portion of lands will play a critical role in the shaping of not only the Philippine nation, but the whole Pacific region. Uh-oh. Liberal revolution. Uh -oh. In 1898, the Filipino-American War broke out. Colonel John Stoughton, a repeated veteran of war of pacification against Native Americans, led the 6th U.S. Cavalry with a station in Central Luzon. In Kinga, On September 12, 1903, President Theodore Roosevelt declared Fort Stotzenberg as an official military reservation encompassing some 3,116 hectares near the Sapambata River in Angeles, Pampanga. What used to be just a grazing ground for the horses of the U.S. Cavalry has now become part of the U.S. military facilities. The name Fort Stotzenberg was a tribute to the slain colonel. From then onwards, the U.S. military developed Fort Stotzenberg as part of its military infrastructure in the Philippines. Its expansion and development immediately followed. When air power has become part of the warfare, a half-mile dirt runway was constructed inside the camp hangars and other support facilities were also put up. In 1919, this portion of Fort Stotzenberg would be named Clark Field in honor of Major Harold M. Clark, a pioneering Army aviator who got killed in a sea accident in Panama. In the 1930s, 
and up until the breakout of World War II. Clark served as a landing field for medium bombers and accommodated half of the heavy bombers stationed in the Philippines. It was very large for a landing field of the day. In the late summer and fall of 1941, many U.S. aircraft were sent to Clark in anticipation of war with Imperial Japan. Though it eventually succumbed to Japanese Imperial forces, the Americans recaptured the base in January 1945 after three months of fierce fighting. On July 4, 1946, the United States granted the Philippines its independence, but only after securing territorial rights over its military bases in the country. From the 1940s to the 1970s, Clark Air Base became the biggest U.S. military station outside the U.S. mainland. By 1990, Clark Air Base was arguably the most urbanized military facility in history. But parallel to its modernization and growth is the persistence of opposition by those who proclaim patriotism. For them, Clark was a living monument to colonial occupation and oppression, a campaign against any treaty that seeks to extend the presence of U.S. bases in the Philippines, started and snowballed. when they decided to evacuate and left for good some few months after the Philippine Senate rejected a treaty of extending the U.S. bases. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo was a geologic drama of cataclysmic height. Mount Pinatubo claimed the record of having the second largest terrestrial eruption of the 20th century, paling a bit after the 1912 eruption of Nova Rupta in the Alaskan Peninsula. Its effects were felt worldwide, ejecting roughly 10 billion tons of magma and 20 million tons of sulfur oxide, wow. bringing vast quantities of metal to the surface environment. It made the global temperatures drop by about 0.5 degrees Celsius due to the sulfuric acid haze that it brought about to the stratosphere. People were killed by the eruption mostly by roofs collapsing under the weight of the accumulated wet ash. This was aggravated further by the simultaneous arrival of Typhoon Dite, 
About 500,000 lived in the evacuation centers for almost three years following the eruption. Many reforestation projects were destroyed, valued at around 125 million pesos. Agriculture was heavily disrupted, with 200,000 acres of rice-growing farmland destroyed, and almost 800,000 heads of livestock and poultry killed. The cost of eruption to agriculture was estimated to be around 1.5 billion pesos. In total, 364 communities and 2.1 million people were affected. More than 8,000 houses were completely destroyed and 73,000 were damaged. Roads and communications were likewise devastated or destroyed. Total losses in 1991 and 1992 alone were estimated at 10.6 and 1.2 billion pesos respectively, including damage to public infrastructure estimated at 3.8 billion pesos. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo severely hampered the economic development of the surrounding areas, particularly of the former Clark Air Base. Clark Air Base has been converted back to the authority of the Philippine government. But what do you make of a former military base, which is now buried Despite the magnitude of disaster, the resilient Filipino spirit thrived. Volunteers arrived in Clark to help in cleaning the area. Engineers, students, and ordinary people contributed their time, their skills, and talents, not only to rebuild Clark, but also bring forth its growth and development. In April 1992, the Philippine Congress passed Republic Act 7227, creating the Basis Conversion and Development Authority, which was later signed into law by then-President Corazon Aquino. A year later, President Fidel V. Ramos issued Executive Order No. 80, creating Clark Development Corporation as the implementing arm of the BCDA to manage Clark's Special Economic Zone with the gargantuan task of transforming the former base into a functioning social economic asset. Today, Clark has been renamed Clark Freeport Philippines, covering 4,440 hectares of the former baselands. The rehabilitation and development of Clark into a special economic hub has also served as a catalyst that advanced the economic development of its adjacent cities and municipalities. Clark is now one of the main sources of jobs and livelihood for the people of Angeles, Mabalacan, Borac, Capas, and Bamban, and even as far as Zambales and Bataan provinces. In the years to come, Clark International Airport is envisioned to be the central terminal for air cargo and passengers for the whole of Luzon. Clark has risen from the ashes. It is once again a living proud monument, no more of the American military, but of the Filipino nation. It is now home to golf resorts, hotels, tourism facilities, manufacturing, a number of industrial buildings, casinos, landmarks, and retail establishments. The airfield infrastructure was improved to make it one of the most modern in Asia and a parallel runway has already been rehabilitated. In the near future, Clark is envisioned to carry the torch of modernization that is intrinsically connected to a balanced ecology of people and nature. And that future begins now.